We've got a Husqvarna ST224 snowblower this morning we're working on. Customer brought it in and said that the uh, belt wasn't driving, so we went ahead and replaced the belt. It had thrown off and ruined the belt, and then it wasn't running correctly. So we uh, went to fire this thing up. We checked the fuel. It looks like it has nice fuel in it. Uh, we checked the oil. You always want to check the oil before you start anything. Make sure there's a good level, that there's not any gas or anything in it. Uh, if there is, you can damage your unit real quick, but we checked all that out, went to fire it up, and the thing either starts and runs, or uh, dies out after a very short time, or it won't start at all. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but we're going to go ahead and show you how to diagnose and get this repaired. So we've got the choke on here. Go ahead and prime it a couple times. It's wanting to start. So again, it did fire before and ran halfway decent for a little bit of time, but it didn't stay running for very long. Now it doesn't really seem like it wants to much of anything so the first thing we like to check if this happens is we like to go ahead and check the spark i we just saw it kind of pop over so we should be getting good spark but it's a good place to start so if you come over to the side you can grab your spark plug wire what you can do is you can go ahead and take the plug out and you can hold it against the block anywhere and see if it actually sparks against there it usually takes a buddy so you don't get shocked but uh, if you're getting a nice spark, you know you're getting a good spark. They also have clip-on testers and things like that you can use. Uh, we use the spark checker, which is very nice. Uh, this unit is the, it's got this LCT engine on it. That's the uh, PWHK 1650 uh, made by LCT. Uh, it's a little bit different than a lot of the models in, in that it has this uh, adjustable choke up front here or I'm sorry, adjustable throttle right on the front. Many of them don't have an or don't have an adjustment to where you can actually throttle down. So this is one of the ones that is a little bit different. Uh, the Husqvarna is a 9619-30096. So if you're checking your spark here, you know you're getting good spark. We already checked that. Um, you know you're getting compression because this thing was running okay before, or at least you think you're getting compression. So if it's pulling over super easy or anything like that, you may want to get into the valves here, uh, figure out if one of them's stuck or something like that. But we, we're pretty sure we're getting good compression at this point. It was running halfway decent at one time or another here this morning. So uh, where we're going to go with this is we're going to go ahead and go towards the carburetor. Uh, the carburetors on these gum up real bad, especially if you're using anything with ethanol in them. Very common issue, and it is the most common issue. So... Uh, the fuel that's in this, again, did look okay, but we are going to go ahead and drain it because we don't ever use or reuse any fuel that's customer supplied that we don't know the origin of. Even if we do know the origin of it, we really don't use it. So, let's see here. That just makes sure that you're not going to have any issues after you do this with bad fuel you don't need a whole lot to do anything or to fix this unit all you really need is a 10 millimeter socket or wrench to take off the fronts here and then you need a pair of needle nose pliers to go ahead and take off the fuel line you will need a screwdriver uh, to take out the main jet and to do some things with the carburetor but the majority of it's all 10 millimeter uh, bolts so we like to use just a piece of a wire loom a lot of times. Uh, you can just pull a piece out here to clean up the carburetor if that's what you want to do. Otherwise, you can use torch tip cleaners with the, with the ends snipped off. You can use um, really anything to clean the um, outlet and the inside of the carburetor here. We'll show you. But the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and take the whole cover off the front here. So if you start out at the top... You just want to pry between the choke and the throttle plate, pry up, and it comes straight up and off. So it shouldn't be difficult to get up and off there. Just pry in between the two. And then the 
uh, throttle assembly just pulls straight up also. So that gets it 100% off of there. You're not gonna hurt anything by doing that. Uh, you can't pry too hard, so don't worry about breaking anything. Next, a couple 10 millimeter bolts on the front. Got the two on the front, and then you've got the two over here. And then you've also got the two up top. So the two here, you've got one here, and one on the other side, right here. Perfect. Now once you take all those off, you will notice that there are two that are a little bit longer. These longer two will go into the muffler guard. They take a little bit longer bolts. So pay attention to that as you're taking them off. The top just pulls straight up as far as the muffler goes. If you pull that straight up, you can kind of pull this whole assembly up and out towards you. So you do have to get that out of the way of the muffler, but it just pulls up and out towards you. So up and out toward. Now you don't want to be super rough with it or anything like that. There are wires and other things attached. But once we get down to the back side, all you have to do in order to get it fully removed is you've got to go ahead and get the assembly here for the primer on this side and you just pull straight down. So that gets it out of the way. And then we're to the carburetor. So you can take these lines off the back if you like. We don't normally mess with them. We usually just set them to the side. The assembly on top for the keeper can just come right out. And then that gives you a little bit more room to get it out of the way. So at that point, I'm not really sure why they thread it that way. I could go under just as easily and stay out of the way as you're putting it, putting it back together. So uh, from there on the front, we've got two 10 millimeters. You can remove those. They come straight off. And it doesn't matter which way these go back on. The assembly on the front will come off now. Okay. And then you've got this black piece here. So the easiest way is to pull the whole carburetor towards you just a smidge. You can get that freed up and then pull it straight up. You know, you want to make sure that this doesn't come with it. That stays on there. It just pulls straight up and out. So at an angle, kind of like this, up and out. That gets the whole assembly out of your way at that point. So now all we've got is the fuel line left and then our linkage. Fuel line comes off very easily. Just up and over. Uh, on the fuel line, if you take and you twist before you pull it off, that'll keep you from ripping your fuel line. So then you can just kind of pry up from the bottom. If you try to just pull it off the top, straight off the bat, a lot of times you'll rip the fuel line and then you gotta mess with replacing the fuel line. If it's not bad, there's no reason to replace it. You can get the wiring out of the way at that point. Now we're to the carburetor and the only things left hooked up are the spring. So the spring and the linkage. So if you pull it back towards you a little, you can just go ahead and pull that spring off. It just comes up at a little bit of an angle and out. Springs off. And then the clip gets pushed directly towards us from the back. And then it comes straight up and out. Nice and easy. And the rest of this will stay in there. Now do be aware that this at this point can come out. So if you're messing with it real hard, you want to make sure that that does not come out and doesn't get lost. You will need that to put this back together. We like to just take it off and set it to the side. The rest of this will all stay together besides the top. You can take that off if you like, just don't lose it. Um, we like to just leave it straight on there, but I'm going to go ahead and take it off just, uh, just for show. I'm going to show you how to get this carburetor clean and get this thing back running how it should be. Let's adjust down. Get a nice close up for you. Okay. So from there to get the carburetor apart, you can take the bottom bowl nut off. Just come straight out like such. Now there is a gasket there on the bottom. See here. Yeah, so the carburetor is kind of full of some black stuff in there. 
See a bunch of black down in there. I don't really see any water or anything like that. The fuel actually looks pretty good and it doesn't look horribly bad, but there's definitely some black. It looks almost like metal shavings. The fuel actually, oh, I do see water. There's a ton of water. It's a whole line of water in there. The whole bottom is filled with water. And then it's just got a little tiny bit of gas on top of it. So if you can see that line just, just directly down there, that's, that's the fuel sitting right on top of the water. So it's, it's full of water. That's the issue here. So we're draining that all out. As far as the fuel goes, I'll show you how to flush the tank and we'll get this carb cleaned up. It should be an e a pretty easy uh, and quick fix as far as the carb goes, because it just has water in it. It looks like so take the carb apart. You can take your pin out directly out, pull the float bowl and the needle. And then you've got your main jet. You want a screwdriver that's big enough that it that it's not going to strip down on the inside, but it's not too big. That way you're ruining the, thre the threads there. So this Craftsman works about perfect. A lot of the utility ones work perfect too, but I like to push in while I turn. If you push in, that keeps it from stripping a lot of times. I'm going to pull that straight out. Once it's all the way unscrewed, sometimes they get stuck. Sometimes they come out easy. You can kind of hit on the bottom. If it doesn't come out nice and easy, if it's got a bunch of ethanol gunk or anything in there, what you can do is on the choke side, you can come in here and you can push from the top. You can see it down through the middle there. You can go ahead and push on the uh, emulsion tube to push it down. Sometimes if it keeps getting stuck in there, you'll have to push it back and forth. Use some carb cleaner up through there a few times uh, to get it out. So a lot of times they come easy though, but if not, you can push straight through here. You'll see the little brass come up through the middle and that's where you'll want to push. And that's actually pushing this piece here out down through. So a uh, pretty easy thing. Make sure your gasket stays on here. We put them in the ultrasonic cleaner. We like to go ahead and take the gasket off before that happens, just so it doesn't swell up because you will get some swelling sometimes out of them. So uh, from there, we'll move the governor stop. You just want to unscrew it and then you'll pull, push straight up here on this pilot jet and it'll come all the way out now there is a tiny little jet down through here and if you don't clean that out you will get surging real bad out of it so you want to make sure that's clean when we put it back together we'll show you how to do that but at that point the carburetor is all the way apart you can take the needle and the spring and everything off here if you'd like it just pushes up and pulls straight out so it's just a spring that sits right there we like to just actually leave it on a lot of times and we'll just throw the whole thing in the cleaner just the way it is. So we throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner. Obviously, if you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, you can skip this step and just follow the other steps. Uh, the ultrasonic just cleans it a little bit better than it normally would. So we like to use that for all of our carbs and we always clean the carburetors on them. So I'm not going to worry about the bottom nut. It doesn't really need to go in there everything else we'll go ahead and throw in the cleaner we usually throw them for about 10 minutes or so well that fell down in there real good but that's okay so you can just see that eating away at it already you can see all that stuff floating up off the bottom bowl just helps a lot with doing this easier than what it normally would be so we'll come back in about 10 minutes and finish it up so we're back with the carburetor out of the ultrasonic again if you don't have an ultrasonic it is not 100 percent necessary while we were away we went ahead and replaced the plug with the new ngk as opposed to the one that was in it we also flushed the fuel tank out so that's one of the most important parts. Uh, if you notice how this is sitting, it's kind of sitting forward like this. So to get all that fuel out, you've got to kind of tip it back. You've got to kind of play with it. We like to blow compressed air down on the inside to make everything just get cleared up. So from there, we like to use a carburetor cleaner and we'll blow down in there and just keep blowing it out until it's 100% dry. There should be nothing left on the inside of that tank. It should be 100% dry by the time you're ready to restart this unit. So we've got it all blown out. Uh, it does take a minute sometimes, uh, but if you use gum out, that'll kind of dissipate the water. If you use that and then compressed air, slosh it around. If you don't have compressed air, a lot of people throw a rag down on the inside, a clean rag, 
uh, and, and go from there. But it does need to be 100% cleaned out to get best results out of this. Otherwise, you're still gonna have water in it and you're gonna get droplets in the bottom of the carburetor. So here's what we pulled out of the tank and it doesn't look like there was a whole lot still left in the tank that pulled through the fuel line but obviously there were still some in there somewhere. So when we used the gum out and sprayed everything out, it dissipated that water. One more thing to note, the intake gasket that comes off of here, if it's in bad shape at all, you wanna replace it. We replace them every time. We use a Honda 16221-ZH8-801, just cause they seem a little bit thicker than most. We're gonna go ahead and replace that though. If your old one is okay, you can try to reuse it, but if, if it's leaking in back, if you get an air leak at the backside here, you're definitely gonna have an issue with running. That'll cause it to run poorly, to pop, to sputter. We will also replace the one behind the black adapter if this adapter is loose at all, or if it pulls out when you pull the carb out, because you know it's not making a good seal. Right now it's still, it's still attached, so I'm not worried about an air leak there. It never broke the actual seal. So I'll show you how to put this car back apart and get this thing back in action. All right. Good angle here. So intake gasket, I'll put it up top. Just get it kind of out of my way. So the whole unit, we're just gonna spray it down with carb cleaner at this point. So we're gonna just dissipate all that water that's been on here. And again, if you didn't use an ultrasonic, no big deal, just start with these steps here. Once we've got that on, we can go ahead and blow it off with some air. What you're trying to do is just dissipate all that water so normally not too hard <clears throat> and if there's any gunk or anything like that on any of this stuff you want it all off otherwise that stuff's just gonna re-clog up you're gonna have issues again right back to the same thing all right on the needle and the seat here you want to make sure that the edges are 100 clear so if you're running your finger down you shouldn't feel anything, especially on these edges. If you're feeling it on the edges, it's gonna stick again. This needle should also be 100% perfect. If it's not perfect, you're gonna wanna replace it or just replace the whole carb. A lot of times these things are really expensive for carb kits. We recommend just replacing the whole thing if you're having issues with something like that. But anyway, clean that all off. Also the bowl, get all that stuff out of the bottom, get all the water off, dissipate it, and then blow it off with compressed air. Just dry it all down the rest of the way out. So when you get over to your pilot jet up top, we took just that wire loom out of the, out of the wire brush kit. And you can take just one of these little pieces and all you have to do is stick it straight through. So if you stick it down from the bottom, it's a tiny, tiny hole, but you should be able to see that going up through. If you can't see it, there's an issue. If you look down through, you shouldn't see any green gunk or anything in there. If you're seeing any of that, it needs cleaned out good. So, but we'll just poke that out real good. Make sure it's clean. You can blow it out with compressed air also. Dry it off. Then you're gonna go to your main jet. So right down through here, the most important part in the whole thing. That jet needs to be 100% clear. You can use torch tip cleaners or anything you want. Just clean that out real good. So, shouldn't be anything in there. If there is, it's not gonna run right. You're not gonna get enough fuel to the unit. There shouldn't be anything sitting around the inside edge on either side up there either. The emulsion tube, these holes should go 100% straight through. You should be able to see through those all the way through. If you're not seeing through them, it's blocked and it's going to not run right also. So you can go all the way around here. This thing's completely clear. I looked at it as I was pulling it out, kind of played with it a little bit, but there's nothing. I mean, all those holes all the way through. If you use light on the back side, you should be able to see 100% through, you should be able to see holes. So, holes through the back side if you're looking through, through all these holes, straight through. 
If you can't see the holes down through there, you know that it's clogged up, you know that it needs cleaned. Also down through this way, you should be able to see there. <clears throat> Once we've got everything cleaned off, you can put the emulsion tube back up. The skinnier part goes up if your carburetor is sitting upright or down if it's sitting upside down. Put the main jet back in and you want to go ahead and tighten that up. When you're tightening that up, don't over tighten it as you know, this thing, they like to get stuck down in there. So don't over tighten it, just snug it up real good. All right. And then you can put your needle and your seat and your float and everything back in. It just goes straight in. Now I do want to note the seat here, you want to make sure that's extremely clean also. If there's any kind of gunk down in here, in this brass piece, that'll stick the needle and seat up and it's going to cause your carb to leak. Uh, that or fuel not to get in. Um, that or the fuel is just going to run into your crankcase, one or the other. So <clears throat> that's a very important part. Make sure it's nice and clean. This one looks pretty well spotless, but uh, if you run one of your big torch tip cleaners in there, Otherwise, just the wire loom that you pulled out, you can run that in there and just kind of move it in and out with a pair of needle nose. That'll clean it up also. There's no right or wrong way to do it as long as everything gets out. So it's nice and clean. We'll put it back together. Now you can test at this point to make sure that it's creating a seal with a vacuum gauge. Uh, otherwise, you can use your lips and, and suck on this. Make sure it creates suction to your tongue or to your lip. Uh, something like that and then open it up make sure you're getting good flow through <clears throat> now there is a screen on the inside of these if you take the whole thing apart uh, nine times out of ten that's unnecessary i've never not been able to unclog one from the back side just blowing compressed air through it the ultrasonic pretty much eats it away also as long as you're getting good flow through this you can test it with your mouth or however you'd like you're not going to have an issue with that so uh, go ahead and put the pilot jet back in the top. Just throw it straight in. Now you should feel kind of a snap in. It should go in there good. If it doesn't, it means one of the O-rings on the outside could be bad. If those O-rings are bad, it'll cause kind of that same <clears throat> leaking issue going on with this also. So those are good. It fits in there nice and snug. So we like it just like that. And then you can put your stop for the governor in. So it goes in and it usually goes <clears throat> past on the back side about a quarter inch. <clears throat> All right. So again, through until it's about a quarter inch past on the back side here. So that's all good. Everything's nice. And if it sticks up or stays or anything like that, you're going to want to address that. The bowl drain always goes opposite the inlet no matter what carb you're working on so we do want to go ahead and put the gasket back in sometimes they swell up real bad and they're hard to get back in but you just poke them on down through and they will go back in correctly so all right just like such everything's down in there perfectly and we can tighten everything back up at this point so go ahead and put the all right so now everything with this is good to go just like it was we can go ahead and put the top piece back on like such and then we can put our governor keeper back on also now we can reinstall everything see how this thing runs so we'll come up top adjusted back up top here so again that intake gasket right on that side it's good to go we replaced it first thing you want to do is stretch your spring in so you can pull it put it straight down through the hole and then with the governor linkage it just goes straight down in and then you push it back to lock it in so push that back in lock it in now we're back good to go now you do want to blow compressed air up through this way also when you're cleaning that tank make sure that thing's 100 percent dry this one is put that back on and then we'll go ahead and put the black piece that's just kind of a guard that goes back on there again it kind of goes at an angle like this you want to make sure you clear your governor linkage when you're putting it back on straight down 
everything's perfect. So you can test your linkage now. You want to make sure that linkage moves back and forth. It moves back and forth great there. If it's not spring loaded at this point, it could mean that we're not in high throttle. So the high and the low throttle is here. If you move the, the assembly, it'll change that back and forth. So now for the one last front piece. And then the two nuts to hold it on. Again, it doesn't matter which way these go, they're threaded all the way through with the same thread. Tighten everything up. Now you don't want to over tighten it, but you do want to get it nice and tight. So again, I don't I don't worry about putting this on the on the back side there like it was. It's not hurting anything being over here. Um, I don't even worry about the keeper. It's honestly kind of pointless but it goes back up and over. Make sure we got a good view there. So it goes back up and over the top. I'm gonna get a little bit better view up on the top for us. All right, let's see what we got. Just wanna get a little better view of how to put this back together. These things aren't the easiest thing sometimes to get back together so right okay so the whole thing from there just comes up back over the linkage pull the the muffler up and out of the way Everything just sits back down on there like such. Now there is the, the primer line that sits up underneath. It's real easy to get to at this point to put anything back on that you want to. You'll just hook those two pieces back up to where they came off of. There's just the little nipples there. They just go back on, no big deal whatsoever. Now everything's basically back where it needs to go. Again, the two longer ones that we had will go up into the muffler. So one on this side, and then you got one on the front. Okay. And then you got the two in the front piece here. And you don't want to tighten anything down until you get all of them started. If you do, you'll run into issues to where nothing's going to want to line up, nothing's going to want to tighten down. That's really anything with putting anything back together. You're always going to want to put all of these screws in before you tighten anything down. We're good as far as tightening goes at this point. All right. Now that just goes into the left, kind of facing towards the left side here. Everything should operate exactly how it did before. If it doesn't, we know we've done something wrong. So go ahead and push that back down in. Now your choke's good to go. What we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna go ahead and put some fuel in it and fire this thing up and see how it runs. Now we use ethanol free fuel. We also treat it with Phaser 3000 just to keep the moisture out of it. If it sits anywhere uh, that could possibly draw moisture very very common issue so why not take that extra step just to ensure we don't have issues you don't want to overfill that because if you've got uh, cold fuel and then you go into a warm environment it expands a lot of times and it can up and overflow out of the tank I do see that quite a bit people say the gas is leaking and it's well just because they've overflowed it so throw that in now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fire this thing up, see how it runs for us real quick. So we've got it to run, we've got it to choke, to fast. And throw the electric start on here real quick.
So it looks like all we had here was the carburetor had some water in the bottom of it. Batter, it was gummed up a little bit. The fuel didn't look horrible that came out of the unit. It had some, some kind of gunk in the bottom. Uh, you can see kind of down at the bottom side that there's some little floaties of some water right there. But nothing too major in the carb. So maybe just some debris and then a little bit of water. Maybe not that high quality of fuel. And that caused this whole thing to start run erratically or not start at all. It's, it's very common on these engines. It doesn't take a whole lot for them to have this issue. So that should get you going. Really uh, give you at least some guidance on what's going on no matter what's wrong with your LCT PWHK18650. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.